on World News Tonight. Major milestone. Biden's Build Back Better bill now one step closer to changing countless lives. Welcome back. Australia reopens for business to the rest of the world as border restrictions are dropped. Curtailing COVID. Europe erupts into protests against new restrictions put in place. Holiday cheer. Paris lights up with the spirit of Christmas as the holiday season nears. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Anuradhi Wickramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. On today's coverage, we start off with the United States. President Joe Biden's $1.75 trillion bill to bolster the social safety net and fight climate change passed the House of Representatives and headed to the Senate, where moderates and liberals remain divided. The Build Back Better bill is passed. Cheers broke out among Democratic lawmakers after the U.S. House of Representatives passed President Joe Biden's $1.75 trillion social spending bill last week. But now the legislation, a crucial pillar of Biden's domestic policy, faces an uncertain future in the U.S. Senate, a chamber split 50-50 between Democrats and Republicans. Republicans are monolithically opposed to the bill, which expands free child care, slashes the cost of prescription drugs such as insulin, provides college grants, and puts more than half a trillion dollars toward combating climate change. But at least two Democrats, West Virginia's Joe Manchin and Arizona's Kirsten Sinema, have balked at the size and the scope of the bill. Now, intra-party wrangling may result in changes to the measure. One provision up in the air, paid family leave. Manchin had opposed that proposal in the past, but one of his colleagues on Sunday said Manchin might come around. This is the only moment to get paid leave done. New York Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand told CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday that she had spoken with the West Virginia centrist and believed they could find a way to include four weeks of paid leave in the legislation. The United States is the only wealthy country that does not pay women on maternity leave. Australia formally embarked on a hotly contested program to equip its Navy with nuclear-powered submarines in a new defence alliance with Britain and the United States. For more on this, we have other there in the World News Special Correspondent Timothy Phillip reporting now from Melbourne in Australia. Timothy? Yes, I'm right. Australia, the United States and United Kingdom officially signed the Exchange of Naval Nuclear Propulsion Information Agreement in Canberra giving Australia access to nuclear-powered submarines technology. Australian Defence Minister Peter Dutton, British High Commissioner Victoria Treadon, and US Charged Affairs Michael Goldman signed the documents at Parliament House in Canberra. Prime Minister Scott Morrison stated that this is the first time that the US and UK will have shared this information with a third country ever. Australia in September cancelled a deal with France's naval group, opting instead to build at least 12 nuclear-powered submarines in a deal with the United States and Britain. The new alliance, dubbed AUKUS, is designed to give Australia access to nuclear-powered submarines for the first time. The decision has caused a major bilateral rift, with France recalling its ambassadors from Australia and the United States in protest. Back to you, Anwar. All right, thank you. That was Other There in the World News Special Correspondent Timothy Phillip reporting from Melbourne in Australia. The United Kingdom will host foreign and development ministers from the G7 group and also from ASEAN in Liverpool next month. Let's cross over to Other There in the World News Special Correspondent Malshia Besekra reporting from Norwich in the UK. Yes, I'm Radhi. Britain's Foreign Office said in a statement that the three-day summit from December 10th will discuss a wide range of global issues, including global health, human rights and economic resilience post-COVID-19. Ministers from South Korea, Australia, India and South Africa will attend and those from Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia will be present for the first time. The summit will be the final event of the UK's presidency of the G7. The Museum of Liverpool will be the main location for the talks. The meetup will be the second of its kind following talks held in London in May. The government said Liverpool has been chosen to host the high-profile talks due to its history as an iconic port city with a global outlook, strong ties around the world and a thriving cultural, musical and sporting heritage. 
Responding to the recent terror attack in Liverpool, Foreign Secretary Liz Truss said that they were deeply saddened by the awful attack but that there will be a major move to security, mentioning the city will never waver in the face of such atrocities. Back to you, Anuradhi. All right, thank you. That was other than the world news special correspondent Malshia Beseka reporting from Norwich in the UK. The number of migrants trying to force their way into Poland from Belarus fell again after an apparent change in tech by Minsk that could help calm a crisis that has escalated into major east-west confrontation. Poland's leader warned on Sunday that the migrant crisis on its border with Belarus could be a prelude to something worse. Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said the crisis was far from over as he toured Estonia, Lithuania and Latvia. The EU has accused Belarus of flying in thousands of people from the Middle East and pushing them to cross into the EU states in response to European sanctions. Morawiecki said the situation in Afghanistan could be utilised next. We know of diplomatic and official contacts of Belarus and Russia with Uzbekistan and Afghanistan, and there will be an attempt to use the crisis in Afghanistan as the next stage of the migration crisis. And the migration crisis is just one part of the great political crisis in which Lukashenko, with his real principle, and I think nobody has doubts that this is President Putin, will continue such actions. Minsk, which denies fomenting the crisis, cleared a migrant camp near the border on Thursday and started to repatriate some people to Iraq. Despite this, Poland's border guard alleges that Belarus is still transporting hundreds of migrants to the frontier. Poland's leader says things could escalate, pointing to an increased Russian military presence close to Ukraine, as well as in Belarus and Russia's Kaliningrad enclave, which borders Poland and Lithuania. A recent poll shows that more than half of Poles are worried the crisis on the border could lead to an armed conflict. Hundreds took to the street of Warsaw on Saturday to demand help for the migrants. About 10 migrants are believed to have died on the Poland-Belarus border, where a frigid winter has set in. A Palestinian gunman from the Islamist group Hamas killed an Israeli and wounded three other people in Jerusalem's oldest city before being shot dead by the police. Amateur video appears to show a wounded man lying on the ground before a series of gunshots echo through the narrow stone alleys of Jerusalem's old city. Israeli police on Sunday said a Palestinian gunman armed with a submachine gun opened fire, killing one civilian and injuring another before Israeli police shot him dead. Israeli authorities said two police officers were also injured in the incident. A police spokesperson said the gunman was a resident of Palestinian East Jerusalem. The militant Islamic group Hamas confirmed the man was a member of its organization. Less than an hour ago, we had a very uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, case here. Israel's interior security minister, Omar Barlev, was at the scene where he spoke. Part of the uh, uh, Hamas uh, terrorist group came here and uh, began uh, and, and he shot uh, uh, two civilians that were here. It is the second attack in Jerusalem in four days and occurred near a gate to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, a shrine revered in Islam. Al-Aqsa abuts the western wall, sacred to Jews as the remnant of an ancient temple. The adjacent holy sites are a frequent flashpoint in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. As paramedics bore the gunman's body down the steps to the western wall plaza, an onlooker appeared to spit on the stretcher. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett on Sunday acknowledged the attack and its victims. He also spoke glowingly of a decision by UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson's government to designate Hamas, including its political leadership, a terrorist group. Hamas has repeatedly launched rockets and battled Israeli troops since seizing control of the Palestinian Gaza Strip in 2007. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side.
Welcome back. Now on to the updates of the COVID pandemic. Massive protests erupted across most of Europe over the weekend with demonstrators opposing COVID-19 vaccine passes. This comes amid the implementation of nationwide lockdowns and other measures introduced by their respective governments to tackle the latest surge in cases. Thousands of people gathered in central Brussels Sunday to protest reimposed COVID-19 restrictions amid the latest spike in new cases. Belgian police estimates some 35,000 people were at the rally. Many there to protest the government's strong advice to get COVID-19 shots, as well as potential moves to impose mandatory vaccinations. The demonstration also turned violent, with hundreds of people smashing up cars and setting fire to garbage bins. Police responded with tear gas as well as water cannons and were finally able to restore order before dusk. Over the past several days, there have been marches in many European nations as one government after another has tightened antivirus measures. In the Netherlands, police arrested over 50 people during unrest in The Hague and other towns on Sunday after violence broke out at a demonstration against COVID-19 measures that kicked in the previous day. Police say several officers were injured, with two of them receiving treatment at home. Thousands also gathered in Vienna after the Austrian government announced a nationwide lockdown beginning Monday to contain the country's latest surge. Protesters demanded their fundamental rights and democracy, standing in opposition to the government's new measures that will only enable people to leave their homes for certain reasons, including buying groceries and going to the doctor. While police used loudspeakers to tell protesters to wear face masks, most of the crowd ignored the demands. Following skyrocketing infections across Europe, many governments have opted to introduce vaccine passes and lockdowns to try and contain the spread. This comes on the heels of the WHO's warning that another half a million people could die of COVID-19 across Europe by March next year if emergency measures are not taken. Australia will allow foreign visa holders to enter the country from the start of December as it takes further steps to restart international travel and support the economy. Australia will open its doors to fully vaccinated students and other eligible visa holders from the start of December. Vaccinated tourists from South Korea and Japan as well as business visa holders and temporary working holiday visa holders will be allowed entry. Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced the news on Monday. The return of skilled workers and students to Australia is a major milestone in our pathway back. It's a major milestone about what Australians have been able to achieve and enable us to do. It will mean a lot for the economies of our, of our, of our country, right around, the, right around the country, who need those workers and want to see those students return. The return of foreign students who contribute about 25 billion US dollars a year to the economy will be a major boon, especially to the education sector. Australia closed its international border in May last year in an effort to contain the spread of COVID-19. The closure led to many higher education facilities, which rely on foreign students, to lay off hundreds of staff. Entry rules began to relax in recent weeks to allow foreign family members of citizens to enter the country. So far, Australia has recorded around 200,000 cases and nearly 2,000 deaths, much lower than other comparable countries. The latest announcement comes a day after a group of international students arrived in Australia from Singapore as a travel bubble between the two countries came into effect. Americans are lining up to get their COVID booster shots as health and state officials are urging adults to do so before attending Thanksgiving gatherings. At-home testing kits also give the option to stay even safer. Tonight, a different type of holiday rush is underway. Long lines for vaccines from New York to Denver. Relax, relax, relax. Some governors across the country urging the fully vaccinated to get boosters as millions prepare to gather. Get it before Thanksgiving. Make sure that when you um, sit down at that Thanksgiving table with the people you love, you have the highest level of immunity to protect them. In West Virginia, only 41% of the population is fully vaccinated. If you're 18 and older, absolutely you ought to be getting a booster shot right now. With the CDC making booster shots available to all adults, Americans are rushing to get their shots. The number of daily vaccinations nearly doubling over the last month. 
I'm here to get my booster vaccine to stay healthy and to protect people around me. Health experts say the boosters should take effect quickly, but many wonder how often they'll be needed. We would hope, and, and, and this is something that we're looking at very carefully, that that third shot with the mRNA not only boosts you way up, but increases the durability so that you will not necessarily need it every six months or a year. This holiday season, in addition to being vaccinated, Americans have more options like rapid take-home tests now widely available. Avoiding the long lines seen at testing sites last year. We're planning to take a rapid test the morning of. Though at-home tests aren't always reliable, Stephen Kistler and his friends are hoping to add an extra layer of security. Since we're all vaccinated, that definitely helps, but uh, it's still possible for people to have breakthrough infections and to spread infection to others. Sudan military is to reinstate PM Hamdok in the New Deal. An agreement reportedly will see Abdallah Hamdok return to lead a transitional government while all political prisoners will be freed. Sudan's military plans to reinstate Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok and release all political detainees under a deal to end weeks of deadly unrest. That's according to the head of one of the country's main political parties, head of the Ummah party, Fadlala Burma Nazir, who attended the talks that led to the deal, said that under a new agreement between the military and civilian political parties, Hamdok will form an independent cabinet of technocrats. Hamdok has agreed to the deal to stop the bloodshed from the protests that followed an October coup when the military seized power. That's according to a source close to the ousted prime minister who could not immediately be reached for comment. The civilian coalition that shared power with the military previously, however, said it opposed any talks and called for protests to continue on Sunday. Hamdok was placed under house arrest when the military took over last month derailing a transition towards democracy agreed after the overthrow of Omar al-Bashir in 2019 that ended his three decades of autocratic rule. The military dissolved Hamdok's cabinet and detained a number of civilians who held top positions under the power-sharing deal, agreed with the military after Bashir was ousted. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. China's birth rate last year hit a load not seen since record began due to an aging population. More people going into higher education and anti-COVID measures. It's the first time the figure has dropped below 10. K-pop sensations BTS have been named Artist of the Year at the 2021 American Music Awards. Not only are they the first K-pop artists, they are also the first artists from Asia to win the grand prize at one of America's biggest music awards. Recent data shows that the number of young people in South Korea, for those in their 20s or 30s, is declining at a rate faster than any other age group. Such a drop could possibly pose as a risk to South Korea's economy, as those in their 20s and 30s are supposed to play a major role in economic activities. Five people are killed and more than 40 injured after an SUV sped through a Christmas parade in Wisconsin, knocking down dozens of people, including youngsters, waving pom-poms and a group of dancing grannies. Flushed with victory after Prime Minister Narendra Modi carved into demands for agricultural reform laws to be repealed, Indian farmers held a mass rally to demand minimum support prices and extend to all produce and not just rice and wheat. Whereabouts of former doubles world number one have been a matter of international concern for nearly three weeks. Almost as abruptly as she had vanished, Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai reappeared in public view. Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai had a video call on Sunday with the president of the International Olympic Committee and told him she was safe and well, the IOC said, after Western governments expressed mounting concern for her well-being. Images of Peng at a children's tournament in Beijing published earlier in the day had done little to quell unease following a nearly three-week public absence after she alleged that a former senior Chinese official had sexually assaulted her. In a statement, the IOC said Peng began the 30-minute call with its president Thomas Bach by thanking the Olympic organization for its concern. It added that Peng, quote, explained that she is safe and well, living at her home in Beijing, but would like to have her privacy respected at this time. Current and former tennis players, from Naomi Osaka to Billie Jean King, had joined the call seeking to confirm she was safe, 
using the social media hashtag where is Peng Shui. The whole community, tennis community, needs to uh, back her up and, and her family and, and uh, make sure that, uh, that she's safe and sound. World number one Novak Djokovic said it would be strange to hold tournaments in China unless the, quote, horrific situation was resolved. On November 2nd, Peng posted on Chinese social media that former Vice Premier Sheng Gao Li had sexually assaulted her several years ago. Neither Sheng nor the Chinese government have commented on her allegation. Peng's social media post was quickly deleted, and the topic has been blocked from discussion on China's heavily censored Internet. The concern over Peng came as global rights groups and others have called for a boycott of the Winter Olympics in Beijing in February over China's human rights record. And finally tonight, the Champs-Élysées Avenue in Paris was lit up in red for the Christmas season in the presence of Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo and French celebrity singer Clara Luciani. Hundreds turned out for the occasion, contrary to last year, when France observed a lockdown against the spread of COVID-19 and only a handful of officials turned up for a ceremony broadcast live on the internet. Considered by the French to be the most beautiful avenue of the world, the Champs-Élysées spreads over nearly two kilometers and is lined with stores and restaurants. At the top stands the Arc de Triomphe, a landmark monument of the French capital. In case you have missed any of the stories we had tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash other there in English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Suzanne Shanali will join you again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Anradhi Vikramasinghe. Until then, stay safe and have a great night.